want to say what's up to everybody. David D hanging out with you. And man, there's a lot that we can talk about and we will talk about. Uh, we want to talk about the plight of political prisoner, uh, founding member of the American Indian Movement, Mr. Leonard Paltier. Uh, very important that we know his name, we know his history, we know the struggle and the movement behind him. And so we have a couple of guests, including my man Aaron here, who's put together, uh, he's a family member of the Peltiers, uh, put together an album. They have a documentary, and we're going to talk about that. Also joining us, somebody who is no stranger to discussions about political prisoners and their plight. He's known for his uh, famous saying, free them all. We're talking about fair, uh, Chairman Fred Hampton, Jr. So, you know, first of all, welcome to the show. Hey, right on, good to be welcome here. Welcome to the show, Aaron. Right, thanks for having me. You know, Fred, I needed to ask you a couple of questions um, before we jump into the situation about Leonard Peltier, uh, because you're from Chicago. And I think with uh, with this past weekend, you know, for people who don't know where you see this, uh, this past weekend we had the uh, shooting at Newton, in Newtown, uh, Sandy Brook Elementary School. So a lot of people are discussing mass shootings, mass murders, and inevitably, what comes up is the discussion about the carnage that routinely goes on in Chicago. It's not unique in, in the sense of that, but every weekend we hear 10 people, 30 people, 40 people. In fact, this past weekend, 15 people were shot in the city of Chicago. But when we talk about mass shootings, the, the eyes of the country go to the school shootings where it's mainly white, mm -hmm. and we bring out the TV reporters and the cameras, the president is there, and it's really a, 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 an attempt to heal those wounds. But we don't necessarily see that when it takes place in the inner cities, whether we're in Oakland where we're filming at, or in Chicago where you're from, and I wanted to see uh, what your thoughts are about that when you hear and see what's going on. 15 mass shootings yeah. this uh, year alone. Well, this case, the, the case in uh, Connecticut showed the um, contrast on how the black community in particular, and oppressed communities in general, how, uh, how they're viewed, the type of response uh, that, that is given. And we've seen a situation in Connecticut that even before the crime scene was even sealed off, even while people were still com coming out of the school, uh, you've seen representatives from uh, mayor and all the way up to the chief C CEO of this country, uh, President Barack Obama, literally, literally come out, you know, teary-eyed, addressing the people, and even the um, the way the sentiments were, 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 uh, were expressed, the way the, 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 way the uh, police department, the way that they dealt with the people, um, it's victims. And you hear terms such as uh, grief counselors, so on and so, uh, so, on and so forth. On the con in, in, in contrast, in uh, south side of Chicago, Cincinnati, Detroit, and as you said, as you, just, as you pointed out, in particular Chicago, um, the cases where, I mean, where the, the rampant body, you know, uh, body bags are so normal within our community. In fact, uh, within approximately a week and a half ago, I literally seen children six, seven years old, you know, literally playing with the residue of the, the, the yellow tape, the murder scene, the crime scene tape mm -hmm. that's, 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 still, that's, that's still lays around um, South Side, West Side, uh, uh, Inglewood, North Lawndale, Chicago. And the deal is, these children, they don't see, let's, uh, let alone a president, uh, any city official, they, you can get a mailman to talk, to come out and talk about, you know, they're, they're, uh, uh, we're talking about grief counselors or uh, the flags be uh, flown half staff, and this trickles down to the sentiments on how the way the, the, uh, black people view themselves, because it's a message sent to every politician, every uh, police department, every slum lord, every foreign merchant in our community that these that these type of activities are cool and all right to happen within our community. So, this is a blatant example of, again how how black lives in particular are viewed as opposed to uh, white folks. And, you know, it's interesting, I mean, because obviously there's sickness, obviously there's trauma, and the concern is that if this guy who shot all those people, his name is Adam Lanza, mm -hmm. who got legal guns from his mom, who was carrying all types of weaponry that in the city of Chicago you would you wouldn't be able to, you, you, would be, you, you wouldn't be see the light of day from the jail cell if you had that. Mm -hmm. But she was able to have all that. And the concern is, how do we make sure this doesn't happen again? How do we heal, the, heal from the trauma? And I want to go back to that. 
what sort of trauma do you think folks in a place like Chicago is dealing with when there's so many shootings? 15 this weekend. I mean, what do you think, you know, how does that impact the day-to-day -day movements of people? Asada, Asada Shakur uh, pointed out that uh, with being oppressed, one must constantly, continuously attempt to remind us, him or herself to be able to distinguish what's normal and what's abnormal. And the deal is that you know, a lot of times in the white community, they say today was a good day. They may be speaking in reference to the stock markets or something, so it was good. However, in the black community and other oppressed communities, when they say today was a good day, that meant they may have only been pulled over by the police two or three times, you know, uh, some, something of the sort. And it, um, we had to, you know, uh, start expo exposing deal with these contradictions, I mean, you know, objectively and not let the, the system, w w regardless what apparatus it comes to, uh, it, re it represents itself, in, uh, the schools, the media, or any other forms of propaganda, tap into the emotions of the people to get some sort of knee-jerk response. I know a lot of people are gonna say, oh, he's gonna chairman free, he always wants some sort of conspiracy theory type of thing. But you, I mean, just for the record, I wanna go on, I, don't do, I mean, a suspect, you know, uh, I, I'll be real cautious with situations such as this. Uh, Cause I know that this, historically, uh, this system, strange, quote unquote, strange situations happen and they, and they are exploited to, um, Push put, it, put, push, to, to, push a whole agenda, uh, more legislation, more you know, saying to take away the, uh, more the, uh, democratic rights of the people, you know, and, and, and nobody can uh, deny the fact that there's a intensification of the tactic you know, on saying to take take uh, take the, uh, the right to bear arms from from, from the community, and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, we, 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 we well, it's interesting you said that. Let mm -hmm. me let me stop there for a second, uh, man. I'm gonna bring you in in a second on this, Aaron. Obviously, when we walk around our community and we have people who aren't well, mm -hmm. who have a fatalistic view on life mm -hmm. that will pull a trigger at, at, a, at a drop of a dime and kill folks, they shouldn't be walking around with weaponry. I think anybody watching and hearing mm -hmm. would agree. At the same time, as much as I don't want those guns in our community because innocent lives are killed, mothers, mm -hmm. dads, brothers and sisters, here in Oakland, we had, what, four or five kids killed. Mm -hmm. Over the weekend, there was a four and five year old bay, uh, kids killed outside of Newton in Alabama. Mm -hmm. So this is happening in black and brown communities. But what caught me was, before the bodies were even cold, Michael Bloomberg had already, the mayor of New York, mm -hmm. had already shot off a, a, a statement. He put a statement out and it was basically like, yo, go in there, and put these laws into place mm -hmm. and show this leadership. And everybody was cheering and I thought, wait a second, this is the same Michael Bloomberg that stood in front of the world and said the police department is his private army. Mm -hmm. Not our private army, his private army. And where I'm going with this is that if you look, not too long after that statement, mm -hmm. when Occupy Wall Street showed up, mm -hmm. the police were dispatched Mm -hmm. to smash down on that movement. But there were two things that happened with that. The police worked for Bloomberg and smashed on it, but the police were also rented out to J.P. Morgan and Wall Street that were paying mm -hmm. the bills. So mm -hmm. when people were getting beat up and tear gassed and beaten because they were demanding economic parity and wanted to know what's up with the finances and the 1% versus 99%, the police wearing white shirts were working for J.P. Morgan, or at least they, you know, J.P. Morgan had given them a big old uh, donation. Mm -hmm. And so they were basically, we will protect you and not us. And so with that in mind, that's where it becomes scary. It's like, hmm, okay, so if the police are your private army, mm -hmm. who's protecting me from your army? Mm -hmm. Because you didn't say us, you said yours. Yeah. And we can carry that over to Rahm Emanuel, the mayor yeah. in Chicago, where you saw similar yes. uh, 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 politics play out during the Occupy movement, where, yes. or even when they had NATO, the mm -hmm. NATO meeting, where mm -hmm. he shut the whole city down and Chicago police was his private army, mm -hmm. but not ours as the citizens. So how do we look at that knowing these two uh, right scenarios now, exist? Object, uh, again, objectively, and, and that's difficult because the deal is the media. They, I mean, they still show you, you know, a perfect example: the children gunned down. We talk about, and it strikes the emotions of the people. But I say objectively, let's go even with the history of the gun control movement, which was birthed in response to the, the emancipation of you know uh, uh, chattel slavery. Right. And so the, the the deal was basically that these former slaves should not be armed, and 
the whole uh, 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 Minister U. E. P. Noonan said the best. And unarmed people are subject to, subject to slavery in, in, at any given time. And we can look at let's, uh, the case of uh, uh, case scenario with, with, with some big guns. When the uh, U. S. was talking about Iraq was guilty of uh, possessing weapons of mass destruction, the U. S. situation with North Korea said we strapped, we got, we 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 armed, we strapped, we armed over here. There, you know, there was a hesitancy about even moving and did not even go to North Korea. In Chicago, it should be noted that Chicago, Illinois, has uh, historically had the most stringent, the toughest gun laws. So this is not, you know, equate to the whole thing about, you know, some, this, this, this uh, false this propaganda put forth about stopping crime. And the whole thing uh, regarding the police department being privatized, the correlations can be drawn with inside the prisons, what we refer to as the concentration camps, right. the colonial schools, and the, uh, uh, the, the deal is, it's, 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 it's literally big business, you know what I'm saying, for the for the for corporate America, you know what I'm saying, but, but at the same time, it uh, initially, initially runs down the public schools or the, the police or uh, here to serve you as a public entity and how, you, how you, see, you see the fangs coming out more and more out of this system saying, no, the whole thing about big business, corporation, and privatization. Has Barack Obama cried for the kids in Chicago? Yes, I was, I was and he lived in your city. He lived uh, they, they, he, in your neighborhood. Can, well, no, he's, uh, he's, he's a different neighborhood. No, different neighborhood. Oh, yeah, okay. no, Hyde Park. Park. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that's the yeah different neighborhood. But it's in the south side. It's, it's south side of Chicago. But different and south side. It's different south side. Oh, okay. Um, different different world. Okay. But they. Well, I, thought, um, I thought you might have been hanging out with. No, him, no. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, and I literally, it, it, it should be noted, and children see this. Well, two instances of tears, you know, coming from President Barack Obama is once. Um, in response to uh, commending the white campaign workers that worked on this campaign. And again, this situation here with regards to these children. I want to premise this by saying this, that, so I know a lot of people try to depict me some sort of cold story, disconnected, but we have emotions too, but we, we have the tears there for the, the children in, um, on Osage Avenue in Philadelphia, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, someone might argue, well, Barack Obama wasn't a president then. Again, let's go even to present day. We don't have to talk about no back in the days. Present day situations, the atrocities that black people you know, in other oppressed communities go to on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, some black, brown, and red communities, the atrocities on the reservations, the atrocities in the ghettos and barrios. You don't, you don't even see the, you don't see the president, or all the men. You don't even see a mailman. You don't say even acknowledge. Let's alone talk about terms like grief counselors, so on and so forth. Right. And this trickles down to the mindset of the people. They feel like our lives are not valuable. And you have five, six, seven-year-old children on a day-to-day -day basis, literally laid out. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, being gunned down. Taken up, locked up in some sort of in some sort of fashion by the system in our communities. Miss Clinch, y'all, we alive and direct my man aboard the technique. Y'all know we do this, man. I said, what's the call? Free them all. If it took me here today, but in the case of man, too long ahead of the presidential pantier. I know I'm talking too fast, I'm y'all listening too slow. Man, real quick, man, we're we'll showing some of the daddy down from here, brother, more technique right here, man. So we're doing some of the daddy shop in the pantier. First and foremost, shout out to all the elders, all the political prisoners. Free them all. That's how we say it. I feel that we're living on occupied land right now. We continuously to keep hearing about illegal immigrants and this, this screaming at, at individuals who have lived here for thousands of years. We keep seeing Native American, African people being the victims of shameless and disgusting crimes by the state. We keep hearing about it being swept under the rug. And as a community, I think we're all tired of that. As a community, I think we all know that there's an innocent man in prison and that the federal government specifically targets movements that expose the hypocrisy and the manner in which they take advantage of the public. You know, nowadays they want to pit uh, uh, pri private sector against working class. They got people saying, oh, these teachers are the problems, when it's really corporations that have drained the system completely dry. They try to cut people's collective bargaining all over the world. They try to make it seem like they're humanitarian for offering people life in jail instead of killing them for a crime that they never commit. You're not a humanitarian unless you give the motherfucker back 20 odd years of his life. You know, 30 odd years of his life. Free Mumia, free Leonard Peltier, we're still in the struggle. Mortal technique. We out of here. Aaron, let me bring this in uh, to you as well. Um, Leonard Peltier, your family member, he's been in jail for over 30 years. Yes. Uh, and part of the American Indian Movement, which was subjected to COINTELPRO, was followed by the FBI, undermined when J. Edgar Hoover and others in power were there. Yes. And really what you're talking about is the first inhabitants of this country, this land, who were subjected to genocide. And 
you know, collectively speaking, you know, because uh, people should remember First Nation people are a collection of many folks yes. who speak different languages and what have you, have all been, uh, you know, summarily dismissed and erased from history. And so when we even have these discussions, we don't even talk about Native peoples, you know, it's black, brown, you know, everybody else. And so when you're seeing the type of carnage that's going on and then understanding the history of what First Nation people have gone through, where it's more than just kids wiped out, entire peoples have been wiped out. What are your thoughts when you see this come on, when you see what's unfolded this past weekend go down? Well, uh, right off the top of the bat, it reminded me of the Red Lake shootings years ago where it was on a reservation and uh, it was a native shooting, you know, at a, at a nat on a native school. So that was barely even heard of by the media. So didn't barely, hardly even reported it. So What happened there for people who don't know? Uh, well, y a young man just shot up a school similar, you know, to these to that shooting and to all these other ones we've and seen over the years. Like it's uh, right up in Minnesota, South Dakota area. And um, and Red Lake, you know, there's just the we you know we don't want to get numb to this keep on happening and and when we, we learn about our history, the real history that's not taught in colonial schools, it you know we we uh, don't we it, some of us may identify, some of us may not, but you know through our practices we in our uh, culture we come to learn to understand what it's really about and it's a systematic oppression that's been going on that's historically done and it's not just like done abstractly like in some way that people can understand it's done through the schooling systems and and through boarding schools you know and natives not even be able to learn their own languages and uh, cultures or any of their ways or even their political beliefs you know like a lot of natives these days we have our Leonard Peltier campaigns and a lot of the native community isn't even there because these the pol they may not identify with the politics because they're taught not to to identify with any politics and just be to go along with whatever someone else is dictating for them and so you know, um, myself being um, multiracial mixed with three races, like that had, you know, learning about the native culture was even more of a struggle growing up. But people like Leonard Peltier, which I'm honored to be a family member of, you know, teach the, the native ways from being locked up. And um, there's other people like a lot of other great native uh, warriors too that have turned into like philosophers and teachers over the years. and. They teach like how to identify with the, the genocide and how to like you know self determination, how to stand up to fight up against that, and you know that definitely is a, just a sad tragedy that happened and it was very sad and with what happened um, just and just last week on a <coughs> and uh, it was this last last Friday and it was the same day as the Leonard benefit in uh, New York, so you know the. Uh, we're getting, re you know, gearing up for a <coughs> Leonard benefit that's been done for years, and then the morning of it, it happens, and so it's just a hard tragedy. And then it's such that Leonard Peltier, because he's in prison for aiding and abetting the death of two FBI agents, even though he's falsely convicted, people identify him as a shooter, and he and him being the bad guy when he's the victim, and and he has been targeted, was targeted, and they might automatically say like, well, you know, how are you going to take that type of take, like you? without understanding what happened on in this case. Let's even look at that phenomenon for a second. The New York Times ran an article about Adam Lanza, the person who was responsible for the 26th death. 20 children, six uh, people, uh, women at the school and his own mom, 27 people total. And they, huma they humanized him in the article. They talked about him being a troubled kid, they even said that he was intelligent, he, he had mental challenges, but he was able to overcome. And they really, you know, if you didn't know better, you really feel, you know, sorry for this guy, at the very least. And you come away walking, you walk away from reading that article saying, poor, poor Adam, we need to help more people like him. But 30 years later, you know, you say the word Leonard Peltier in certain circles. And it's demonized, you know, in the mainstream. Yeah. He's a sh he's a shooter. He's a killer. He's somebody who he's the reason why we America's going down. That's the sort of thing. Yes. Um, even with your father, who was the victim of a massacre on December fourth, nineteen sixty nine, Fred Hampton, uh, chairman of the Black Panther Party. He's loved in our community, but even when you talk to people outside, 
if we bring up his name, he is seen as somebody who is evil. He might have brought this on himself, is what some people would suggest. So this demonization of people who are actually fighting uh, to bring about a better tomorrow for their kids, the same way as these people in Newton. How do we make that, not only make that connection, but how do we as people who are on the receiving end of bad politics and bad uh, legislation and what have you, how do we not lose our humanity in all this and how do we not get into a thing where we're bitter or we come across as, you know, me too and, you know, fighting, as, as my friend Mark Gonzalez says, you know, fighting for tears, uh, fighting, uh, fighting over people's tears. You know, how do we remain, you know, human and whole? And I'll start off, with maybe you and then you, Fred. Well, basically, I take it on a case-by-case -case basis on what, what if, whatever the situation may be, and, and going into that, going into that situation, looking at uh, what's 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 really going on in the background, what uh, social circumstances have to do with this, and wh who the people represent, and basically, Leonard Peltier has uh, many principles that people follow him because they're identified with those principles, and that dehumanizes, you know, that uh, dehumanizes him to. Uh, uh, excuse me. Um, it humanizes him to us. Yes, humanizes him to us. And basically, t part of the work I'm doing is to try to make it so we dehumanize. I'm sorry. You're trying to make sure he's humanized. Humanized, humanized after mm -hmm. all the work that's going to, to make it not seem that way, you know. Right. And it's, it's hard to... Uh, you know, any time there's a shooting or murder, the way the media always presents it as, you know, they're automatically guilty, and we don't even get a chance to, like, think about is there should be some sort of what really happened there, just the way it's presented to us, right. and the way people get conditioned just to look at these cases, and how do we identify Leonard Peltier or something identified in just some shooting just that happened on the street, and one thing that is really important is when people learn about uh, indigenous culture, that they learn about the sovereignty, and how Leonard Peltier was part of, you know, sovereign people and living on this in this land on Turtle Island North America and they're sovereign people and they're allowed to, you know have even though the government has allowed them to they're, they're allowed to have a, a army and our warriors to stand up and defend the community you know and their sovereignty plays a key role in, in the whole Leonard Peltier situation because the, really the jurisdiction of the courts don't even have jurisdiction over this but then they automatically give it you know to the courts but really like there's have our own government, our own system, but well, it's not honored. It yeah, like, we don't yeah. get so that's the first case, like with Leonard Peltier. But then, for uh, you know, innocent, innocent people that are locked up that aren't part of sovereign nations. But I like that's uh, you know where I feel like nationalism is important because like we if we we have to identify our own governments, our own peoples, with uh, building up structures um, to to help out with with what's going on in the with uh, oppression over the years as a response to that. And a lot of like uh, white white liberal people don't under, uh, ident identify with why we should do that because you know it's just all, like all for one thing. But we're not all subjected to the same things and have to go through the same things in the community. By and the police treat everyone different, like treat groups of people differently, and they've been doing that. And they've taken the place of having to. Um, we, we automatically s assign responsibility to the uh, police to defend ourselves when we have the right to defend ourselves and to, you know, d definitely if when this part of the operation, when the government was really stealing land with one fifth of the land being transferred over to uranium companies. And, you know, there's this whole like war going on between the U.S. tribal government, U.S. US and the tribes. And it's, you know, it's been swept under the rug and turned into this whole other thing to where like, a lot of these issues, um, you know, are jokes to people. They're not. They're not taken seriously in certain circles, and that's why I wanted to build the bridge between uh, Native American culture and hip hop culture, and build that bridge because I feel we could uh, explain a lot through hip hop by, you know, right. d by explaining what's really going on. Well, hold that thought. We're going to come back and talk a little bit about your album here that you put together with a number of people, and. Uh, it's a pretty good lineup from Immortal Technique on down to Brother Ali and many others. And, uh, you know, free Leonard Peltier right now. Definitely. I mean, I, I would always rather do a benefit than a memorial, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, right now, while the brother is, right, is here, we need to make sure he gets his, as much light on his case as possible. I mean, it's a, it's a universal, truth is universal, truth is timeless. 
And if people really understood that, you know, this is a soldier, regardless of skin color, regardless of cultural background, that's fighting for the for the good of humanity, for the good of man, for everybody to progress forward, and for the wickedness and iniquities to be pushed away, for all people, I think that other people should break, you know, uh, join in the cause and and celebrate this mission to right these wrongs. It's a universal cause. I mean, regardless of what organization you 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 associate yourself with at any time, Cointel Pro was on you. You know what I mean? The people with the same light, the same microscope, the same sniper was it was aimed right at you. And they looked at us all as the same way anyway, so we might as well look at each other as the same and come together for and, and right this wrong and fight this cause, man. Freeland or Peltier Freeland or Peltier. And not only Freeland or Peltier, but let's bring light to the wickedness that caused the situation in the first place, man. No doubt, Freeland or Peltier. Fred, same question, you know, just looking at um, the constant demonization and how do, how do, what do we need to do to maintain our humanity? Re to reiterate, everything is political and, and uh, words, terms, fashion, you name it. And Che Guevara of the Cuban Revolution has uh, said that the role of the propagandist can be as important as that of, that of the guerrilla. And U.S. And US imperialism, this, this system in, uh, in particular, uh, historically, when we look back on uh, Vietnam, uh, the propaganda they used—they were not killing Vietnamese people. They, they the term they used such terms as uh, um, uh, the, the VC. So this dehumanized the people to make this. So it wasn't that you were actually killing human beings. They were VCs. And uh, fast forward to Somalia, uh, they referred to them in the terms of the skinnies. You know what I'm saying? So it was not Somalian people that were being uh, gunned down. Uh, you know, under the pres President Barack Obama administration, uh, when the, Somali the, the, the Somalian children were assassinated. They, 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 uh, Which exactly. You heard terms like the pirates, you know what I'm saying, uh, within, our, within our community today. You hear terms to uh, crackheads or gangbangers. The news can report uh, 300 gang members gunned down. And this disconnects the people from each other and, and de dehumanizes them. Um, we have to struggle, be consistent. They, again, everything is political. Um, hiding, uh, uh, hiding the contradictions, and, and, and not just uh, when, when it's politically correct to talk about this, but you know, our music, our, our everyday conversations. Mm -hmm. this, it was a, a big, a big hoopla the response when I raised some uh, issues about this modern-day Pied Piper. You know, uh, uh, Sean Carter. A lot of people refer to him as Jay Z. I term him Slay Z, and it ain't no personal thing. Uh, it was, it was, it's, a, it's a political. Summation about just even the, uh, say that when he, when he referred to saying that uh, made reference that uh, he, he arrived the same day that Fred Hampton died, and the opposition was that he would dare not you know saying to take uh, Liar Corn or any uh, um, uh, uh, anybody from their respective situation and say in Nazi Germany that people just passed away in Nazi Germany. There's a whole the, the, uh, the intensity of recognizing what how what words you use and the whole the, 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 to be able to distinguish assassination from that from right. uh, just passing so away. Let me ask you that. You know, that's uh, for people who don't know. Jay Z is born on December fourth, nineteen sixty nine, and one of the things that he put in a rap song, and he says frequently, you know, when Fred Hampton Jr. I mean, when Fred Hampton, your father, mm -hmm. um, who we should say didn't die, he was mm -hmm. murdered. You know, they walked. He was assassinated mm -hmm. by Chicago police and the FBI mm -hmm. and others. Um, as you slept and a gun was put was pointed to your mother's stomach mm -hmm. as you, when when she was pregnant with you yeah. you know so these things went on he says you know um, I was born the day Fred Hampton died mm -hmm. and I think he meant it as a compliment like you know like he acknowledges there's a history that he acknowledges that he came to this world on 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 a date that we should know mm -hmm. um, but you didn't see it as a compliment. Why not? I mean, what what what, what, what was the disconnect? Well, let me. A lot of times, a lot of times people come in late, late, late in the movie, or late in the game, and they come with a subjective response to, uh, to, to get a little background. This was our first encounter with you know, send uh, uh, Jay Z, Slave Z, or any other uh, similar forces. We've been uh, we have, with our organization, the POCC slash BPPC, the Panther Cubs. One of our campaigns, one of our tactics, is the uh, uh, code of culture. Mm -hmm. And our mantra for that is: there are too many of us in Sing Sing, to, in reference to the, the prison. Right. But Cash just be talking about some bling bling to try to win these four to some point of unity with the struggle. It, and, and we expose a number of different contradictions. The fact that um, uh, people, J, uh, Jay Z, Slay Z, they can they can donate the proceeds uh, to, uh, for the first day of release of their, their albums to go to the New York Police Department. 
Same New York Police Department took stuck rectum or stuck they plunges. Said, oh, they did the, the, after the, 9/11. Yes, Jay Z done this right. exactly. Right. It's uh, the, 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 the brag in this uh, album was about doing benefit concerts for Columbine. And a lot of people take a position, I think it's, it's, it's a class contradiction. Well, we should just be happy that he even mentioned, mentioned your father. We take a different position. And, 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 follow, and you, if you follow the lyrics all the way through, it was a degrading, it was an attempt, you know, uh, the whole thing, um, uh, or, or, or real niggas don't die, they multiply, to even connect him to the legacy of Chairman Fred. The, I mean, this his, this his past birthday, he, I mean, he got a five million dollar watch. And no, that's, 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 that's no connection to Chairman Fred's legacy. It's, it's a, it's a blatant contradiction, and the, um, a lot of people uh, take the position of, well, we should just be happy, so on and so forth, that people acknowledge that, but again, you look at uh, 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 this, this individual in particular, amongst others, they are wordsmiths, they are very talented, we're well, utilizing very, uh, uh, words and terms, and they under and seeing somehow, they understand the importance of that when it comes to other people. Our black people in particular, a lot of times we try to disconnect it. Well, it's just a song, it's just this word, so on and so forth. But the ruling class, they understand the connection of politics and the terms. That every, that's why he came, that he came out on Michael Jackson. I was for, different, Michael, for, for the, Michael Jackson exactly. tried, Michael Jackson did that one When he time. made reference to the, to the Jewish community. Right, Steven Spielberg was his boy and made him the he change, can, change Exactly, they don't, they don't play it. No other nationality plays it. The right. He came down on these various, and, uh, these various individuals, the group, uh, the murderers. When they, when they, when they, when they made misogynist it turns about black people's no problem when disrespect the, the homosexual uh, community or the police that he came down we our black people must we must, we must up the ante it's interesting you know i remember when uh puffy put out the song all about the benjamins mm -hmm. and i have the um the radio i have the 12 inch mm -hmm. and or the 12 inch copy on vinyl and it's interesting because in the song <coughs> on the radio edit they flip the word uh, the N word, they flip the B word backwards, you know, so mm -hmm. you don't hear it. And there's a part in there where I think it's Jada Kiss, whoever's on there, Jada Kiss is on there, and it's like, uh, I do like she do, we stack chips like Hebrews. Mm -hmm. All right, stereotype about Jewish people mm -hmm. making money. So they don't even flip it, they they remove it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's nothing there. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. You flip the other side where it's the unedited version, yes. And the N word and the B word is there, yes, yeah. but the reference to Jews stacking chips I out. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was always curious about that. And then somebody told me, you know, because I, I used to ask, like, what happened with that? And they basically was like, Clive Davis is like, I don't play that. They don't play that. I don't, they don't play, play that. that. You know, don't, I don't, don't a nice it. song, but no, nah, you don't you play don't that. Play don't that. Play that. And, Exactly. And so I can respect that. Yeah. In that we sense. don't play that. Right. And so, and, 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 and the Cubs and, don't play that. Right. And that's what I was getting at because it seems like you folks from Chicago cause don't like these name shout outs because the same thing happened with Rick Ross when he started shouting out uh, 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 Larry Hoover, the founder of the uh, uh, Gangster Disciples. Next yeah. thing you know, they was like, man, if you talk about us, Pay us up. They, they're suing. They're, if I, I can't they comment on that, yeah. it's, and I, I just want to, we the, the Panther Cubs, we're an international organization. Right. I, and which was essentially, like we are based in Chicago, and, and, and I'm from Africa, colonized in Chicago. Right. Right. Chicago is, is, a, is, a, is a structural place. Right. And, it, and, and even this, um, in reference to this recent uh, phenomenon, but this question about uh, Williams, I believe, who refers his name as uh, Rick. Rick Ross, right. who literally stole the name of a, a person that's still alive. Free right. Rick Ross, you know, so this guy, Free Rick, Rick Ross, was suing to get his name back. That's a contradiction in itself. So a lot, so I think people look at this short-sighted. The, the, uh, when we spoke thing about Slave Z, when I, the, my reference to him as Slave Z, the question should come up, well, who is the master? I want to, let's bring live corn. Let's bring the rest of these criminals out. Let's have a real deal, objective discussion. Right. But let's have a discussion about this thing, about this, uh, um, uh, Williams, a.k.a. A a uh, Rick, Rick Ross. Why would the Chicago Police Department, who 60 Minutes just said is the uh, capital for false confessions, co false confessions and unsolved crime, unsolved murders, why would the Chicago Police say they have the resources they're going to investigate the GDs for this? Uh, the, the, exactly. So who is this guy? Wait, so, so they're wait, they're going to Chicago Police Department said they had the they had the time and resources they're going to investigate this whole situation with Rick Ross. Now this is just it's the same city Chicago has unsolved murders so on and so forth. So who is this guy? Well, this is a rhetorical question. We very clear, and this, this whole 
And I want to even kick the door in. I want to I want to seize the opportunity to have a discussion about not just even with the, with this guy, uh, this this um, so called Rick Ross. A lot of these uh, even so called conscious community. How with no accountability, people can come take people's lifestyles. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got a lot of studio gangsters. You got studio panthers studio, who talk about they doing something and they can dis they can say say certain lyrics and turn and go back to their. Uh, 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 suburb house, suburban houses, so on and so forth. I mean, I see it was surprised me if you threw an outside concert and the rain come down, a lot of these guys' tattoos start coming up. I mean, real talk. <laughs> so a real t a real type of discussion needs to start be happening. Yeah. People are, it's children, people out there living and dying for these street organizations. I mean, whether you condone it or not, that's, a that's not the, the question. But people, to come and take people's lives and experiences and stories, and also within the quote unquote conscious community. So this is a consistent contradiction how this the system takes these Black Bruce Willis's, put them but actors, put them on a bunch of beats, you know what I'm saying? And and and, and portray this as being realistic. I mean these all these cats can know the hood, they need a GPS to find their way through the ghetto. Wow. And so these are challenges we, we face, like putting together a project, these are just challenges like we face, like because there's with Leonard Peltier, there's a lot of elders in the native community, like what do you we doing uh trying to free Leonard Peltier through hip hop, you know, they don't want the real story to get lost in, the, in the someone's lyrics because yeah. an artist may not have the right history or may not be in tune to what's really going on. And so it's and and it's different because with these projects, I'm working with like independent artists I mean in the community, and that's how we link up. But in the, on the mainstream, you know, this like hijacking of legacies is just uh, is, is really amazing. Like what what, what these artists will go to. Yeah, like I was. You know, I don't want. I don't want uh, a few years ago down the line, and exactly, Leonard, an MC wants to call themselves Leonard Peltier for for community credibility, and then you know, then they start their whole story about themselves, and then they're hijacking what Leonard Peltier is really about. So you know, I you know, faces these challenges. This topic is just right on point because it's really what's going on. You gotta definitely free them all, baby. Believe that, and all you artists out there, start utilizing your voices to raise the awareness of what's going on and the injustices, not only in your city but all across the world. Because our voices mean a lot, and we're a lot of inspiration to a lot of people. If we continue to use our voices artfully, then we can change a lot of things. Society is about what do you implement to change the culture in the days that you live in. As artists, we have that power. Utilize it. Say something worthy of listening. Real talk. Here's a bad open my man. He put you know we do this here. I beat him on the pool table before. That's another story, though. No, you didn't. You got whooped, <laughs> off. You got whooped off. Trust that. Man. Hey, we've been in San Quentin before. We've been, we've been backstage before, man. Brother, always so love me. Speckle got clean this new tour, man. We said, what's our call? Free them all, man. That's what it is, man. Yeah, I performed in San Quentin, you understand me? Gave a live performance up at that time, you understand? It was groovy like a drive-in movie. Then, a few weeks later, whoop on this man and, 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 and some food. I'm telling y'all, man. Next time I had that camera, I'm not going to be on that pool table again, man. You know, too much green out there for it. But we had to pay dues, man, right now, you understand yes, me? I'm finna show up and show out. Much love. Much love. No respect, man. What's up, go? Here's up, eyes open the fist clinch. Y'all know how we do this, man. Mr. Chairman Fred, come to you again, live and direct. Let our brother just y'all let y'all know who this is. Y'all know what it is. If y'all don't know, my name is Raz Kaz, man. And right about now, what we really want to say is free Mumia Abu tomorrow. Yes, indeed. Free the Midland of Petir. We free Rochelle Secu McGee. Man, free to move now. You know what I'm saying? Free seat numbers in Illinois. In fact, we say, man, make it plain and simple, man. What's the call? Free them all. Now it's free. Free them all. Yes, yes, indeed. Indeed. Right on. Yes, indeed. My love, salute. And you know, for people listening to this, you know, just putting it in a hip hop perspective, some people might be listening and going, well, you know, you're making too big of a deal. I mean, what's the what's the big beef? But from a hip hop perspective, you the name is sacred, and you had to battle for your name, or you had to come to some mm. understanding. Um, there's been many battles, you mm. know, mm. with people who you know just had similar nicknames. I'm Mac this. I'm mm. oh well, you know, we're gonna have to battle, you know, uh, or we're gonna have to come to some very mutual understanding uh, of what that is. And so it, it was very important, and, and early on, there were people that would go up into neighborhoods and it would be like, we have to throw down for this name. This DJ name, we battle. For this MC name, we battle. Um, you know, my, my name is sim the same name as uh, uh, Davey DMX, you know, yeah. and, 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 you know, we're good friends. We're friends. He's with Public Enemy now. Uh, but I remember he reminded me that when I met him in New York, when I ran into him, the first thing I said was, what's up with this net? You know, like, yeah. I came at him that way, you know, mm -hmm. and he's a legend. So just to, you know, just just so people understand that uh, it's not some hunky-dory thing, mm -hmm. but it's very serious because it's business attached to it. 
It's legacy. It's your reputation. <clears throat> it's all these legacy. things. And, and, and as you said, things can get lost in the sauce. You know, so if somebody uses, if I call myself uh, Chairman Fred and start running around and beating women and, you know, and doing crazy legacy. stuff, that, that has serious repercussions. Yeah. If I, yeah. Not just limited to the hip hop, because it was an uh, issue with uh, Eddie James. Mm hmm formerly of uh, uh, Chess Records. Right. The song, and there was a big thing about how Beyonce had took her song and performed it for uh, Barack, uh, President, uh, U.S. President Barack Obama. Right. A lot of people said, well, she should be happy. But you don't you don't know what, what that meaning to her, if that, her particular line, to, uh, her life, right. to degrade people, you know, saying what, what they mean. And don't get me wrong, we want artists and the people in general to support, to talk about these cases, so on and so forth. However, do ne don't let the don't let the state come tickle your tummy and, and put you in a position you don't supposed to be in. Do some sort of leadership or spokesperson. Structure is very important. We need the propaganda. You know, the U.S. They have different artists. Uh, Bob Hope. Bob Hope. Uh, uh, he came to perform for the troops, so on and so forth. But you dare not see him go uh, give some sort of uh, military strategy. You know how they're going to uh, deal with Vietnam. He was clear on his role. Right. The, 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 contra one of the, the contradiction is they grab these forces all of a sudden and switch them to be our leadership, portray them as gangsters. You know what I'm saying? And the deal is they can afford the luxury to go back to, the, to, to, to their, to their, to this, to their, their uh, plus situation. When you got uh, children, whether it be in street organizations or people, uh, uh, when you got the case of revolutionaries, I'm talking to say Kuo Dinga, Sunday out of Cola, Little Pair Tears. The uh, uh, Mumia Abu Jamal move now. The, pe and the, and the people in general catching real deal heating consequences for someone who just maybe going through a phase in their life, want to you know what I'm saying play with certain words and terms without any that concrete connection or respect for what's going down. So you're saying don't be a part-time revolutionary? I, I'm not even. I, I'm, 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 I'm getting placed in land. They don't even have to be a revolutionary. They, uh, they can do. It. Chairman Fred said everyone should be able to commit a revolutionary act. Right. We we got Kanye West say what he said about George Bush. Don't like eight hours where he said that. Well, let me let me let me put it. A that was a revolutionary bit. act. He's let not me, a revolutionary. Let me put it more plain. There's a whole phenomenon where people who aren't black will like to use the N word. You know, mm -hmm. they like mm -hmm. to you know they'll they'll mm -hmm. use it and they'll mm -hmm. talk about that. But then they don't want to go through what people who, who are called the N-word have to go through. So in other words, it's like you have folks that will use the N-word back and forth, but when Oscar Grant gets shot because he's oh, no. unarmed and black, they're nowhere to be seen. Man. So even though I don't use the N-word, I'm perceived that way, no, and I'm subjected to being followed if my cars yes. don't have a tag, I'm, yes. you know, all these types of things that I got to go through. And so the old saying is like, if you're going to be a nigga use, using that word, it's like be put, a full time. Put some skin in the yeah, game. Yeah. You can't put yeah, some skin, skin in the yeah, game. That's the other you word. can't play poker for me long distance. <laughs> we, 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 we at the poker table, someone, and someone right. calling in to Vegas. I want to, hold on, who is that? You know what I'm saying? These Drake or fakes, whatever they use, they said the word N word. They say nigga, you know what I'm saying? But then they dead not. His mother's uh, Jewish. He dead not disrespect that, that, that community. Right. You know what I'm saying? But the same thing happens in Native culture. Nope, yes. Because yes. that's the other thing. You see that being pimped a lot where folks are suddenly they're Indian. <laughs> so, you know, like, uh, what are you? Oh, you know, I'm uh, 16th of an Indian, you know, uh, yeah. my great-great-grandfather's mother. So what tribe? Yeah. What language? What's their customs? What mm -hmm. dances do they do? You know, all yeah. these different types of things. Exactly. I don't know, but, you know, if that will get me into UC Berkeley because I can claim mm -hmm. I'm part of a, an oppressed, or they may even walk up to you and say, I'm oppressed too. I have people do that too. Down, you know, they be like, blonde oh, hair, your blonde <laughs> hair, blue <laughs> eyes, the whole nine. Yeah, it's like, yeah. yo, we all in the same. And it's like... Mm -hmm. No, you've been able to, you, you don't, you, you're not Indian full time. You're not on the reservation, yeah, not discussion. dealing with the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So you, it's convenient, yeah. you know. Yeah. So when, when, when we have a discussion on race, the then you want to show yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, once yeah. the casino, you yeah. want to be yeah. that. Yeah. But, but I, I guess what it really boils down to as we're getting ready to wrap up is having a full commitment to these causes. And, and, you know, and I guess I don't want this to get lost on people. What are you asking people to ultimately do as we look? towards freeing political prisoners? What are you asking people to do as we try to, um, you know, get rid of the oppression that all of us are dealing with? I'll start off with you, Aaron. Uh, basically, to, uh, you know, educate yourself on, and to get involved with real, uh, you know. Well, how do you educate yourself? Educate yourself by, like, really go getting a vibe on what the people, what's, what's going on in the community and around those issues, start researching those issues and get involved, you know, any way you can, some like every way, like some people maybe can get involved through music or other things, like everyone has something to bring to the table, and so if you figure out a way to what you can bring to the table and how you can fight, fight, fight back, you know, it's a great way to do it, you know, and what ultimately we're asking people to do is to free Leonard Peltier through a presidential pardon, and if 
you know, on the on if that our second backup option is to get Leonard Peltier's security risk lowered, and there's just certain ways that we go about raising awareness in the community, and it's you know personally I like you know worked on building a coalition with the POCCC and Chairman Fred Hampton Jr. because uh, Fred Hampton Sr. and uh, Deputy Mark Clark were targeted by Cointel Pro and by the exact same agents that were targeting Leonard Peltier and it, all, and it connects directly even though people think maybe it directs on other levels but it directs connectly there too and we there's just you know, if you just educate yourself, maybe not through the traditional ways that just by thinking if you're going to show up to a class by doing independent, like like uh, being just self-directed and just independently doing it and really tapping into the issues that people are talking about, not like the community issues that go on day to day that really affect people and 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 go from there. You know, and and any any way possible, like you know, just w it may be different on a different day. You know, so right. how we approach it is very very uh, important but just making sure that these are real human beings we're talking about and that like that are locked up right now as we speak like praying and dreaming for a, a hope to get right. free and so that's his work for them get out of jail in mm -hmm. two weeks time after they do atrocities in the community and here are folks that are freedom fighters who are doing 30 and 40 and 50 years many of them in solitary confinement yeah. uh, this is the album right here uh, who are some of the people on the album? I see you got uh, Two Mex, that's out of L.A. That's Talib Kweli's on here. That's good. Um, and you're just doing some new stuff. So you got Brother Ali on some of these pieces. Who else? Well, on the upcoming album, uh, A Struggle for Human Rights, um, got Brother Ali and... Uh, Immortal Technique yeah, and one on from the Dead first Friends. project. Got, yeah. Man, you got Rocker from Dilated People? Yeah. You, you, you didn't pull no punches on this. Mm -hmm. No, Yeah, you know, I've studied hip-hop. I love hip-hop and... I really okay. have had my, uh, you know, ears. You got T yeah. Cash, okay. All yeah, right. T Cash. <laughs> and, and we're gonna see some clips from the documentary where everybody from Bun B on down, shouting out Leonard Peltier. Yeah. Chairman Fred, Exciting. you know, um, what's your last comment as we close yeah. out here? Well, again, Revolutionary Appreciation will give us the opportunity to be here. We want you know, air, Every, from some point of unity, you know, with this struggle, I'm a realist. Everybody's not gonna be some sort of frontline freedom fighter. But at some point you need to do the struggle. Keep the keep the case of Linda Peltier, Mumi Abu Jamal, Sunday Ali Coley, Marshall Eddie Conway, say cool Dinger, your brother, the sister down the street, uh, our people in New Orleans, people in general, keep them on your mind and your hearts. In fact, we say what's our call, free them all. I can be also got it at www.chairmanfredjr.blogspot.com. Chairmanfredjr.blogspot.com. Everything is political. Everybody's not gonna be no frontline freedom fighter. Some point of unity okay. with the struggle. I appreciate that. And are you sure you don't live next to Barack Obama? Man, man? you know, whole different. That's, and all just because somebody got this, been, just because somebody got an address in Chicago don't mean that they live in Chicago. Okay, okay. They, they, so just because he got an address don't mean he lived in Chicago. Because I know I went by that house. I saw poodles and oh, puppy man, dogs no, and no pit bulls, pit yeah. bulls and Rottweilers. Uh, 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 that's, that's your neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, talk. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right, all right. <laughs> We're out for now, folks. Peace. Yes, indeed. This is Trillo G for UGK for life, man. We support all of us in the prisons, man. Specifically on the bell time, man. You got free me, man. Heads up out there. We're going to keep the drill on the streets of the country. Representing us in the city. Just like Matulu Shakur. Just like Mumi Abu-Jamal. Let it pelt to you. Free Mumi Abu-Jamal. Free Let it pelt to you. Free Matulu Shakur. Free them all. circumstances, y'all, I would ask for a moment of silence. But in this situation, y'all, you want a moment of noise. You want the state of Georgia, you want California, you want LA, you want Africa and Attica to hear us real loud and clear with a long live Troy Davis, y'all. Long live Troy Davis. Let me hear real, shake the ground of Cook County Jail, shake the ground of Folsom, shake the ground of Attica. Long live Troy Davis. Let me hear real loud. Long live Get out water and come
Come on back, keep on swinging for Sunday out of Angola. Keep on swinging for St. Cuo Digger. Keep on swinging for Mumia Abu Jamal. What's our call? Free them all. What's the call? Free them all. What's the call? Free them all. What's the call? Free them all. Pounds, people, y'all. Do we got love for most devil Tali Kwali? Love for the Shabbat, shout out to the Shabbat!